Okay, now we want to add a slider that's going to let us rotate this whole animal around so that we can see it from all sides and figure out what's going on with our cubes. So we need to add a new matrix in our vertex shader. So we had a model view matrix for actually translating and rotating our cubes. We're going to add this other one that's going to multiply in front. Eventually, this is going to be a camera action. So right now, we're just using a rotate um, to simulate a, a camera. And um, this is going to be the variable that's going to get passed in. Of course, you need to hook this up in your document. So where we connect our variables to GLSL, we're going to do the same thing that we have been doing. We're going to, we're going to hook up that variable to a JavaScript variable. Um, of course, we have to have a slider in HTML. So taking one of our sliders and um, renamed it to camera angle here and made this slider to be an angle slider. And then where we hook up our sliders, we now have this angle slider and we're going to set um, some, some global variable related to this slider. And then we're going to um, render all shapes after we get some action from this slider. And then the last thing that we have to do is we have to uh, use that information. So we've got that uh, global and now when we go to render, inside of our rendering we need to pass this thing to the uniform variable. So um, we're going to declare a matrix because the thing we say from the slider is just an angle. And so we're going to use this matrix and call rotate to turn this angle into an actual matrix. And then we pass the elements of that matrix uh, using the you know, standard uniform passing that we were doing before. Uh, and we get to uh, what we have over here. So now we can see. Now it's a little hard to tell what's going on for a couple of reasons. One, when I move this slider, I have to let go before something happens. So let's take a look and fix that up first. So in our code for hooking up the slider, the two lines are the same, except for I've changed the mouse move now. I reload this page. So now when I get on top of this slider, you see my frames per second is updating. I'm not clicking down and holding, but my frames per second is updating. Why? Because it gets called whenever there's a move. Nevertheless, it's going to allow us to click and drag and do this. I'm sure there's a better way. It's a waste that we're doing all this redrawing when I'm not even clicking down, but I don't know how to fix it, so I'm not. So here we are, we're dragging, and now we can see what's going on. We're looking from all sides. Now, why do my cubes don't have all sides? Because I haven't drawn all sides. I've only put two sides on it, put, put a front and a top. So there's another thing. Is it's hard to tell what's going on because all the colors are the same. So this is because we don't have lighting yet. So let's go ahead and fix that up. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here into our cube and we're going to fake lighting. So what is lighting? Lighting just means that there's a different amount of light bounces off of each surface. And so on a cube, the different surfaces of the cube, some would be slightly darker than others. So what do I do? I'm just passing the color, the same color, and I'm just reducing it. I'm multiplying times 0.9. So and if I put some more sides, the other sides I might multiply times 0.8 or something like that. So it keeps roughly the same color, but it looks slightly different. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. Okay, now it's easier to tell what's going on. So my different sides actually have, have different colors. 